Hi everyone, welcome back to SAT 2 Mass 2C. Um, we're going to continue our discussion on polynomials. So again, if you take a look at this, this is PX, right? What a general polynomial look like? Very ugly, many terms. And in topic two, or the first section of polynomial, we discussed two of the simplest, right? One was just a single term, right? A mon monomial in a sense. And then we talked about what happens when we move one degree higher to the first degree polynomial, which is the linear equation. So by logical progression, we're going to get stop here, right? We're going to talk about the next higher level polynomial, which has x squared. Now, you say, well, that looks awfully familiar. What, what do we call that? Well, that's the first topic. We call this quadratic equation, right? We think of quadratic equation in a polynomial sense as an a2 x squared plus a1 x1 plus a0 x0 or simple a0, right? That's how, uh, in a sense, according to this logic, that's how polynomial comes around. Eh, we don't think like that, right? We think of quadratic as ax squared plus bx plus c, right? You're more familiar to see this term. Does it make any difference at all? Nah, this is just more mathematically formed sort of a formal way of writing this, this is the one that we're used to, right? Y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So what are some of the things that we need to know about this? Again, like I said in, in the previous lecture, what is the only thing, what is one goal we have to do when we're dealing with this? Our goal is to find what? Our goal is to find x. Every single technique that you're going to use involves finding what x is, right? So, <clears throat> how do we find x in this case? Well, you can always just plug in a number and see if it works. And sometimes on the SAT2, that's not a bad idea, right? For instance, if I have, they say, oh, f of x is equal to 29 x squared plus 4x minus 10. What is one of the solutions or one of the zeros for this quadratic function? Ha! Zero. What does zero mean? Zero simply means what x does this have to be? So I plug in that this equal to zero. So finding the, the solution, right? And it give you a, b, c, d, e. In that case, you have a calculator in front of you, probably the best way is plugging them in and see which one it is because the techniques might even take longer, right? So you always have that in your back pocket. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say the test is different than what you learn. What you learn is that if you see an equation like this, you're going to go through a very formulaic way to actually find the best way to tackle this, right? A very mathematical way. On the test, you might not have the luxury of the time to do that. And if you see something that's really complicated, really nasty, and they give you, you know, I mean, these are not the solutions, by the way. And they give you a whole bunch of numbers. Plug them in and see which one works. If you plug in 3, this turns out to be 20. That means 3 is too big. Cross out these 3, right? Then you plug in 2. If you plug in 2, you get 5. You say, well, that's, that's close enough, but that's still too high. So 2 can't be the answer. So 1 has to be it because if you plug in 1, you're probably likely to get something lower and 0. You're going to get something out of it. Okay, so logically, this has to make sense. You have to be able to do something like this because you want to turn around these problems as quick as possible. Not lose how carefully you're doing those, but do them smart, okay? If you do the way that you intended to do or you taught to do, you're simply eating up too much time. This is really hard to factor, which is what we're going to talk about next, right? Because, eh, it's just simply not that easy, right? The numbers are kind of ugly. You're trying to move things around to make sure they, they figure it out and you can factor them correctly, it takes too much time, okay? If you're giving the end numbers, plug them in and see which one works and you're done. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. Now, nice little detour. Let's talk about factoring, which is sort of the single most important algebraic technique you can learn. Okay, the way I like to factor, I have a couple steps. There are a couple techniques and a couple things you could do. The first factor technique I always do is the common factor. Okay, fact out a common factor. What do I mean by that? So if I have um, y 
is equal to 2x squared plus 5x. Okay? And I'm looking for a solution or looking for, they always say, oh, look, what, what is the zero of this polynomial? First of all, how many solutions are there? There are two. Why? The number of solutions or the maximum number of solutions are always equal to the degree of the polynomial. Okay? So this is a second degree polynomial, which means it will have the maximum two solutions. What I do for common factor? What I fact common factor? What's the common factor here? Eh, just the x, right? X exists in both terms. Let's get rid of it. Right? And then you set this guy equal to zero, you're almost done, right? Because in this case, either x is equal to zero or 2x plus 5 is equal to zero or x is equal to minus 5 over 2. Now right, you get your two solutions. Okay, really quick. Always do the common factor because they're always there. They're annoying, right? Get rid of it first. So, for instance, I can change this into something really intimidating. You say, oh, well, this is not really a, uh, this is not really a, uh, a quadratic, right? But to demonstrate a point, I have something like x, 2x to the fifth power plus 5 times x to the fourth. You say, well, this, this is complicated, right? You can have a maximum of five roots, but are we going to get five? Probably not. Let's, what do we do first? When we see something like this, always, always fact out a common, common number. In this case, it's x to the fourth, and you're left with, if you get rid of x to the fourth, you're left with what? 2x plus 5, right? In this case, x to the fourth is zero, 2x plus five is equal to zero. So x is equal to zero, x is equal to minus five over two. My point is when you see anything, when you the first attempt you want to factor, try to get rid of the common factor. Okay? Try to get rid of the common factor. So that, that one is always um, kind of helpful. Because this is the kind of first step you can do to weed out a lot of difficult answers. Um, there is also a technique called factor by grouping. Unfortunately, only if you have very specific problems, then that works. What I mean by that, if I have um, 2x fourth plus x to the third plus um, 2x squared plus x, right? How I want to factor this is not necessary. I can factor out x to the third here, so I get 2x plus 1, and I can factor out x here, so I get 2x plus 1, right? So you kind of group them in a way that you can factor this. It's, again, it's not very obvious, and then this becomes your common factor, right? So you can do 2x plus 1 out and do x cubed plus x, right? So that's kind of how you do this. Eh. It's kind of an extension common factor, but it's really hard to distinguish. It does exist. It, uh, you don't see a lot of problems about this anymore, so just want you guys to know that there is a layer. Now, in case that doesn't work, you're going to look at some of the very, very familiar factor equations. Or use for a frequent, frequently used factor equations techniques. Okay? What's the first one? First one simply says a squared minus b squared. The moment you see that, difference of squares, it is a plus b, a minus b, number one. Very important, okay? First one. You're going to see this quite often. What about a squared plus b squared? Trick question, you cannot factor this unless they have the same common factor, okay? So leave this one alone. You cannot factor this guy. That's as low as you can go. All right, get that out of the way. Next one, perfect squares. What do I mean by that? So if you get a squared plus 2ab 
plus b square. What does this one look like? a plus b squared. Okay? And you also have the option of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which is a minus b squared. These are the two options you have, okay? Uh, it's easy to remember the other way. a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I know I don't usually tell you guys to memorize anything, but you have to know how to do this, okay? You have to know how to factor these. They're absolute, absolutely crucial. All right, so these are the sort of like the, the second degree, right? Sometimes you get the third degree, which is a little bit out of this, but, and doesn't really show up on test that often. It's really good to know. What about a cubed plus b cubed? You say, well, what about it? Well, it's actually a plus b a squared minus AB plus B squared. And you say, wait, can I factor this further? No, you cannot because it's minus AB, not 2AB. So you cannot factor this further. Okay, that's what A squared, A cubed plus B cubed is equal to. And if you do A cubed minus B cubed, is simply A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Okay, that's it. So I would say out of the three, one and two are really important. They show up on the test. They will show up on your test 100% of the time. Eh, number three, if it's good that you know because they sometimes show up, you might, it will make your life a lot easier. Again, it's out of scope of the quadratic. It might be helpful when you deal with even higher degree polynomial, but keep that in mind. Keep this in your back pocket. But these two, the difference is squares and the perfect squares, you absolutely, absolutely have to know. Like, know, know them like the back of your hand, okay? I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already do because this is something that you do know from school, right? And then there are factor cases that simply just not perfect. What do I mean by that? 99% of factor cases are not perfect. Or I like to call, I mean, I like to call them quadratic factoring. You probably recognize the other way. Um, if I have AX plus H, bx plus k. Okay, that's what the end product that you usually want, right? You want to combine them so they become a product. But if you factor this, right, let's expand the seeds to what this gets you. It's going to be a times bx squared plus a k x plus bh x plus hk. Right, so you're going to get a b x squared plus a k plus b h x plus h k. Okay, this is a factor form of this. You say, well, hold on a second. This is really, really complicated, right? I've never seen this before. What you always see is that you always get one in front of x's just because your teacher is nice to you and they make your life easier. Right, you're always going to see uh, one in front of these. It's not really a formula in the sense that it's probably a lot harder to do it this way, but I want to show you this is what the fundamental thing is. But really what you're doing is, let's see, you have this example. Um, right, you have this example. How do I factor this? Well, you always, the key to factor this, I mean, this is kind of what this is. But it's more of a trial and error, right? Approach. You say, how am I going to find breakout six in terms of its factors? Okay. So what you want to do is take this and break out its factors, two factors, um, h and k, so that when you add them, 
you get this guy, minus 1 in this case. Okay? You add them, you get minus 1 in this case. Why? Because AB is equal to 1, right? So you want this to be K plus H, you want this to H plus K. Right? I mean, this principle is this. But practically, you're going to do this in your head. All right, this minus 6, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to do minus 3 plus 2. Right? Minus 3 plus 2. What, what's the product? Minus 6. Perfect. Right? What about if you add them up, what are you going to get? Well, if you add them up, you get minus 1. Hey, perfect. So what you're going to factor this into is x minus 3, right? And x plus 2. That's it. Okay? Really, really simple. All right, so you, again, you do, you've done this a lot. I can make it up a little, a little bit harder because once people start seeing a number in front of an x, they start freaking out. Right? Can I factor this guy? What you have to do then, you have to factor this into two numbers. So I will go 2 and 1. Let's try the other one. Let's try negative 3 and 2. Right? What are you going to do is crisscross, you get 4, and you get negative 3. If you add them, you get 1. They don't match with this. Your goal is to get negative 1 here, right? They don't match. And you say, oh, that, what? that's kind of a bummer. But they don't match, but they give you a pretty good clue. Why? You, you get 1, you need negative 1. You just have to just kind of like switch it off, the negative sign. If you put the negative 2 here, what are you going to get? Negative 4 and positive 3, you're going to get negative 1. You're done. Why? Because the solution is going to be 2x plus 3 times x minus 2. And that is going to be a solution. Okay? That is going to be your solution. This comes from practice. Take an algebra book and practice this. Practice this. Okay? You got to do it as many times as you can so you become very, very familiar with this technique. Because being able to factor a polynomial and do it quickly, priceless. And it's going to save you a lot of time on the test, and it's going to make you very efficient when you're doing problems. Because when we get to higher degree polynomials, all we're going to do is that we're going to boil down to uh, quadratic functions and we can factor this. Okay? Now, the next point you're going to make is, well, Lynn, if I change that into 5, then what do I do? Well, then I can tell you this off the back, that there's no way you can break out these numbers. No matter how you break them, you cannot get them add to minus 1. So in that case, quadratic factoring doesn't really work. Then what? If that doesn't work, your last resort is actually the quadratic formula. So number 5. I'm going to erase this, get myself a little more space. Or oh, everyone's favorite quadratic formula. Again, recall that we have y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, right? That's the basic formula. And they said one of the zero, or both zeros, will have to be x negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. That's it. Just have to memorize that, plug a and b and c in, and you're done. Okay? Uh, my problem is I don't really want to do this on a test. You, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to do this because in that previous case, right, um, let's say x squared minus, what did I say? 2x squared minus x minus 5. In this case, we can't factor. There's simply no solution. So all we had to do is just list our a, b, and c. In this case, our a is 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 5, right? Very simple. And then we just have to plug it in. All right, great. Now we have to do some real math. Negative b is negative negative 1, which is 1 
plus minus b squared is 1 minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 5. All right, be very careful. Divide by 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. All right, ooh, that doesn't look pretty. Uh, what we're going to get is 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus 1 plus this is 20, 1 plus 40, divided by 4, 1 plus minus square root of 41, divided by 4. And so really your two solutions are x is equal to 1 plus square root of 41, divided by 4, and x is equal to 1 minus square root of 41, divided by 4. Right? So that's it. Eh, not really the best, best cleanest solution but you don't have a choice, okay? So all fails, you have the quadratic formula, that's why you will always, always get zeros for a quadratic function. Sometimes they may, might not be real, but you will be able to get a solution for these, okay? Keep that in mind. So remember quadratic formula, I don't think I need to remind you that, you guys probably already know, but know this guy, because this is our last resort. Yeah, if you want, if you think you memorize this, you can do this really quickly, you can really just apply this without doing any factoring. I personally, I think the factoring is a lot faster. If it works, you get the answer like that. Right? This gets a little bit nasty. You do a lot more math and you make a mistake. It's a little bit time consuming, right? So use this at your last resort. If you can do this, great. If you can't factor, you have something to rely on. You're done. Okay? So keep that in mind. So, that's great. Now, one thing that's actually I discover really interesting on the test is they ask you a lot of similar questions. Is, and then one of the things your teacher probably just kind of skimmed through and doesn't really um, go into details is this technique called completing square. So I just want to spend some time and go over that. Okay? What is completing the, what is completing square? Basically write a function as right, this is our regular one. I want to write this as I want to write, write it like that. Why? Because this guy has huge, huge implications when I'm graphing this because I can use h and k to move my graph. Okay? So you say, well, great, Lynn. How do I convert this into that? Right? Let's use an example. This is the technique called completing the square. Um, let's just use just a regular function. x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay? Eh. All right. X A is 1, B is 4, C is 5. All right? Very simple, very straightforward. What you're going to do is you take this middle number, 4, right? I call this P. Eh, I don't know. I like letter P. Um, you take P, you divide it by 2, then you square it. Okay? That's the number that you need to complete the square. So in this case, interesting enough, 4, if I take 4 divided by 2, I'm going to get what? Eh, I'm going to get 2 out of it, right? And then 2 squared is equal to 4. And eh, just coincidentally, that comes out to be the same number, right? But that's the number that you need, okay? So I'm going to, without even changing this equation or this formula, right? I'm going to put a 4 in there. How am I going to do that? Well, the trick is I'm going to add 4 to it and then subtract 4, right? So in, if I'm adding 4 and subtracting 4, what am I doing? I'm adding 0. That's absolutely allowed, right? So what happens is when you do this, this guy becomes x squared plus 4x plus 4, right? So I move this 4 there, and I can combine the rest of them. Plus 5 minus 4 is what? Plus 1. And that's it. All right, so you say, all right, Lynn, you went through a lot of trouble to get that 4 out of it. Why? Because then this makes a complete square format. Okay? Complete square format. What I mean by that, this is actually x plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay? x plus 2 squared plus 1. 
That's it. I finished completely square. You say, well, Lynn, why do you do this? This doesn't make this look cleaner. It doesn't really help you solve, right? It doesn't really help you factor the whole thing. What does this do? This is really a shortcut for you to get graphs. Okay? I'm going to leave this. on the ground, right? You're going to have x plus 2 squared plus 1. Let's say y is equal to that, right? And remember, when you complete a square, what are you going to get? You're going to get x minus h squared plus k, right? Well, guess what? h and k is your movement Okay, on the x-axis and the y-axis from a standard graph. What does that mean? What's a standard quadratic graph look like? Again, I'm not going to review this because I'm going to be insulting your intelligence. What does a standard quadratic graph look like? It looks like this. Now, I can graph this easily by simply saying, okay, h in this case is what? Remember, it's minus h, so it's minus 2. I'm going to move negative 2 over, and I'm going to move 1 up. So that's where the graph is going to be. That is what this guy will look like. You never imagine you can do this so quickly, can you? Because if I just show you the original form of this, I kind of forgot what I put down. y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 5, is that it? Can you imagine this looks like this? No, you can't, right? We're going to talk more about this. This is an advantage of using this format because H and K shows you movement. In later chapters, I'll describe what these are. These are transformations. You're literally translating this graph. H and K space is over, so you take a regular graph, simply plug and move and get this format, okay? Don't worry about this too much because when we're talking about actual transformation of functions, we're going to discuss a little bit of detail. But I'm just showing you that completing square does have its merit because it makes your graphing uh, life a lot easier. Okay? So this is pretty much all I want you guys to know about quadratics. Nothing really basic, you know, completing square is probably something new, uh, something you want to master. Right, make your life easier. So in the third part, so we're dragging on polynomial for a while because it's a big chunk. Like it's 20 to 30 percent of your test. Now I might be exaggerating, but it, it's it's a big chunk of your test. So you really want to master this. And a lot of fundamental pre-cal stuff come, comes from the fact when I can deal with polynomials. All right. So if you think about this, we did one, we did zero, we did one, we did two. The next topic we're gonna do three. Actually, we're going to do three and beyond, and how we going to solve any functions or polynomials that's third degree or higher. And the trick is factor, factor, factor until you get down to the second degree function, and you're done.